Hello everyone and welcome to another video in the channel. The camera is a little bit off center, but uh, that's fine. We're just gonna roll with it. Now, uh, this video is a, a like quick summary on how to import the textures from Substance into Maya. I'm gonna show you the easy way to do it, and then I'm gonna explain the like manual way to to like input all of the textures. Okay, so um, this is the scene we've worked with this guy before. We did the normal bump and displacement explanation, and inside the Substance Painter, I got uh, this guy right here. So as you can see, I just like brought in the guy. I did not use the same one that we had in Seabridge, the high poly. This is just the low poly with a couple of textures that have height information because one of the questions that we got was displacement. How do you get proper displacement to work from substance to Maya? And it's rather simple. First of all, you need to make sure that you have your like height like properly set up here. And uh, you're gonna see the height if you go all the way here to the little um, shader settings and all the way down, this is where the displacement and tessellation is set up. So I'm gonna turn this off and as you can see, it looks interesting but there's no height information. Everything is flat. It might not look flat because of the normal map, which we've talked about before, is really good. But you can see if we go to this angle right there, the face looks really, really, really flat. So if we enable displacement, now we're actually pushing the geometry. And depending on how much we tessellate the character and how we like play with the height information, you're gonna see that we can actually like move points around and create a really, really interesting effect with this guy right here. Now, these are just very basic like stone and hide elements from the materials. If you were to sculpt your own stuff, it would be, of course, even better. But it gives us a nice result. I also added this sort of like emissive lab thing so that I can show you how to export. So the first thing, and this is probably the most important thing about exporting any texture from Substance Painter, is you need to make sure that your export settings are properly done. Usually, if you go here to the output template, you can look for whatever software you're going to be using this for, Arnold, Keyshot, um, Unreal, a basic PBR metallic roughness, RenderMan, like whatever you're going to be using it, it's going to be, or there's probably going to be one preset here. However, sometimes the preset presets are not great. Uh, for instance, on the Arnold AI standard surface preset, if we go to the output templates and we go to Arnold AI standard, you're gonna see that your height information, which is the one that we use for displacement, remember that, is set up to PNG 16 bits, which is not bad, but it's not great. So I recommend changing this one to EXR and 32 bits of flow point. This is gonna give you pretty much the same result that we got from ZBrush and it's gonna work a lot better on your displacement. Once you have this, you just go back here and you export your maps and you're halfway there. The next step is here inside of Maya. I'm gonna show you again the fast way first. In the most recent versions of Maya, you have this thing called the Substance Plugin. And the Substance Plugin is a time saver because it allows you to very quickly go to this button right here, apply workflow to maps. You can select multiple maps, select the maps that you want, such as base color, emissive, height, uh, metalness, normal, and roughness, hit select. It's gonna load all of them right here. You can even add the ambient occlusion. And when I hit apply, I'm not gonna do it because I've already did it. But when you hit apply, a new material, a new AI standard material is gonna be created and all of the maps are gonna be properly plugged in, which is one of the things that a lot of people struggle with. Don't worry, I'll explain how to manually do this in case this little workflow is not available to you or in case the names are wrong and you can't like find the specific map. So uh, that's just gonna save you so, so much time. If you don't have the substance file or substance plugin, you can go to plugin manager, Windows, settings and preferences, plugin manager, and look for the substance uh, plugin. As you can see, mine is loaded and auto load because I use it all the time. And there we go. Now let's talk about the, well, this is the result. We're gonna, I'm gonna get you there in just a second. Uh, but let's talk about the uh, material here. As you can see, this is the material. I had to find it and I changed its name to Lava Material so that I could easily find it. And let's explore real quick all of the elements. Let's start with the color element. So as you can see, by default, the color map is going to be... Um, they're going to add, the, the plugin is going to add this multiply divide node. And what it does is it takes the information from the color and it multiplies it in this case by a value of one, which makes absolutely no change at all, right? If you multiply something by one, you get the exact same result. So that's fine. Uh, however, if you have an ambient occlusion map, you can plug this in on input two and it's going to give you an ambient occlusion extra pass. So it's going to darken the colors a little bit more. In this case, since everything is like stone, dark stone, we don't really need it, but it's it's useful to have this multiply of divide. You can get rid of this and just directly connect the out color of the base color all the way into the base color over here. Now, the base color should be set on the color space to sRGV. This is very important. Otherwise, the colors are going to look wrong. Next one, metalness. The metalness, as you can see, 
you're not getting the, the color information. You're getting the alpha information. It's a little bit weird to think about this. Like, why are we getting the alpha if we don't even have an alpha? Well, most images, when you don't have an alpha, they just grab the first channel or they just grab like a black and white, like summary or, or like integration of the colors. And they got like bring that into the alpha channel. However, there's a couple of things that you need to do on the metalness channel or on the metalness map. And that is first, the color space should be set to raw because we don't want any color correction. If you haven't seen my video about the ACES and sRGB workflow, make sure to go back and check that one as well. Also, if all of these things that I'm talking about are, are like seeming a little bit too confusing, uh, we have courses that cover every single step of the way for all of the different softwares. And you can find that in Skillshare. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just want to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here and Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. So now what we're going to do here, uh, we make sure this is set to raw and we make sure this is set to alpha is luminance. By the way, all this information that I'm saying, you can find this on the official documentation for Substance Painter um, for pretty much every workflow. This one, of course, goes from out alpha and metalness. This alpha is luminance is the important thing that's like grabbing the information from the color and like transferring it to the alpha pretty much. Uh, then we have the roughness, same stuff. We use alpha, we use raw, and we set this up as a alpha is luminance, and we just plug this into a specular roughness. The reason why we're also using the alpha is because whenever you see this little green dot, that means it's a float value. So it's a single number. It's just expecting a single number from zero to one, any decimate points that you want. The red ones are actually our RGV. It's a float three. It's expecting three values that are gonna drive the uh, color of that specific slider. Emissive. Emissive is a color. Therefore, if it's a color, we need the color information. As you can see, it goes into emission color. And this is set up to sRGB because if it's it's a color. Usually, if it's a color, uh, you will use sRGB except for the normal map, which is the next one. So the next one is the normal map. And the normal map, as you can see, is also set to raw because it's not a, this is not a surface map. It's a, well, it's a surface map, but it works with other stuff, not with the colors of the object. And therefore it needs to be set to raw, all phase luminance as well. And we have our bump to denote set with tangent space normal, bump depth set to one. This goes to the normal camera. And that's pretty much it. Finally, as you can see here, we have our height information. We're also grabbing the alpha. We're also using alpha is luminance, and we're also using raw in this case. On the zebras one, we actually went to the R channel. For this one, since it's coming from a substance, we use a slightly different uh, trick, and we grab the alpha channel right here. The displacement is set to one. We can change this if we want to make the effect more intense or less intense, and this goes into the displacement shader over here. All of these are the nodes that we're using to generate or rebuild our stuff. And sometimes you do need to build them manually for whatever reason. So it is important that we understand where all of these connections are. Once we have that, the other thing that we need to uh, keep in mind are here on the little um, geometry. Remember that whenever we're using displacement here inside of Maya, you need to go to Arnold. You need to go down here to where it says subdivision and we need to subdivide this. So in this case, I'm going to change the subdivision to Catmont Clark subdivision, and we can give this, I don't know, like three iterations or something. We don't need to have the exact same amount of iterations that we had on the um, on the one from Sievers because we're not using a traditional subdivision. We're just using like a tessellation effect. And then um, there's one more thing that we need to change, which is on the, the map itself, on the um, over here on the displacement shader inside of Arnold, we need to set the scalar zero value. In this case, mine is set to zero, okay? Zero auto bump. And uh, we get a good result. Let's give it another shot right here. Because with ZBrush, we had to set that to 0.5. But let's see how this looks. Let me pause real quick. And there we go. As you can see, this is what we get. Now, remember, we talked about this before. Displacement does change the silhouette of your object. So by giving it subdivisions and giving it this displacement, we get this very cool, like charcoal, like a kind of looks like brand from League of Legends. Of course, it's not exactly like that guy, uh, but it gives this very, very cool effect. Remember, this is actually geometry being displaced. You can see how the silhouette is changing. And that's how we get this very, very cool, um, well, displacement effect for the textures. 
And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Like that's that's all you need to do to export textures from Substance and use displacement from Substance inside of ZBrush. If we were to change this thing that we were just mentioning, the the displacement here, uh, we can change the scalar serial bear to 0.5, which is what we had in ZBrush. And let's very quickly compare the results. Because again, usually we don't need to do this. Like we should be able to get the uh, result just by using the, the normal values. But if you change that, maybe you will get like more depth and something. Let's let's just try this out. I'm gonna pause real quick. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so as you can see, this is breaking. And the reason why this is breaking is because when we export the displacement from Substance, it knows that the values are from zero to one. And when we do it from, from ZBrush, it's from 0.5 up and from 0.5 down. So that's pretty much it. Like that's the, that's the main difference. If you're getting a displacement from, um, from Substance, you want to keep the stuff at zero. And if you're getting it from ZBrush, you should do the 0.5 as we did in the last video. So that's it, guys. Short video today. Um, a couple of announcements before we finish. We're going to have a portfolio review this weekend. So make sure to check the links down below if you want to submit your portfolio so that we can review it. We also have the contest ongoing, the Whimsical Creature Contest, which closes on the 28th. I'll probably do a dedicated video in this next couple of days. And uh, other than that, I think that uh, I think that's it. We had a great time on our live stream. Oh, yeah, that's what I wanted to show you. Give me one second. So if you miss are missing our live streams and you want to check what we uh, did during the, those, make sure to go to our like video page and if you go to this live section it's right here this is the one that we did earlier today uh, this is the one from last week where we worked on the on the japanese stuff this is one of the first ones then we did this tree we've been doing like five live streams every single monday we're doing a live stream so check them out they're right here you can comment we'll, we'll check the comments as well and uh yeah we'll, we're we're having a great time if you want to make sure to not miss the next uh, live stream make sure to hear the little bell icon like subscribe do all of the things that you normally do here with uh, youtube channels uh so that you get the notifications when we're live but we're doing them on mondays 9 a.m mexico time 8 30 p.m india time so that's it guys thank you very much i'll see you back tomorrow with more 3d content Bye bye